morning, everybody. I'm uh, losing my voice a little bit today, so I'm going to try and make this one short. But I want to tell you about the movie I saw last night that made me think about an interesting concept that I've seen in movies from time to time. So I watched on Netflix It Follows last night. And I would recommend this movie to anybody who likes horror that is not um, express, uh, explicitly violent uh, or a gory. Uh, if you're a fan of slow horror, you're going to like this movie. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it has some good moments. Um, interesting concept, and you're really going to like it. Uh, some of the great elements of horror that are in it are um, you've got you know this really slow build. You've got um, an interesting use of uh, synthesizer-type music that uh, tells you when you're going to be scared so you can get tense without letting you know exactly when it's coming, so it's still a surprise when it does happen. Excuse me. And then you've got a, um, an entity, a malevolent entity, uh, very much a Michael Myers type creature uh, in the way that it is slowly and methodically coming for you. <clears throat> but it's more clearly defined to be inescapable. Uh, and that's to me one of the, the best hallmarks of a, a good monster is that you can't there's nothing you can do to get away from it. That's one of the reasons that Alien was such a cool movie, is that this thing is coming. There's no getting away from this thing. Uh, but the thing I really wanted to talk to you about was various movies, if you were to describe them in a nutshell, you know, do a brief one or two sentence synopsis, uh, you could make these movies sound really dumb or really great through the synopsis. And frankly, I was surprised by It Follows because when I read the synopsis, I immediately thought, oh, this is going to be awful. And um, I gave it a fair shake, and I'm glad I did. The synopsis could have been rephrased very easily to uh, not sound so awful. But basically, the, the premise is that something happens to this young girl who gets cursed, and her and her friends are trying to find a way to get out of the curse. It's, it's basically just that. She's cursed by a, um, uh, a guy who, uh, he has the curse, and then the idea is if you can pass the curse along, the curse won't come back to you until the curse has nobody else to kill. It's almost a, a disease or a vampiricism of sorts, that if you pass it along, it's not coming back. It's the method of transfer that's ridiculous. Sexual intercourse is what transfers it. So basically, you have two ways to describe this movie. You can say uh, a, a, young, a young vulnerable girl is given a curse and her and her friends attempt to... Where'd an ambulance? Yep, someone's coming up behind. They're a little ways off. Um, and her and her friends attempt to remove this curse. Or you can say... A, a curse that is transferred when you have sex comes and tries to kill you. Or you could say, a monster kills you after you have sex. So there's an absurdity there. And that got me thinking of um, Cell by Stephen King. Now, I'm not talking about the movie. I haven't seen the movie. I heard the movie was awful. I'm so disappointed. It looked great. I'm talking about the book. So you have two ways of describing this book. You can describe it as... Um, father were trying to return to a small child uh, through a chaos of mass hysteria. Or you can say, people's cell phones make them go crazy. You describe it when, oh, people's cell phones make them go crazy? Come on, give me a break. Or you say, well, the real point of the story is not that cell phones make people go crazy. It's not even that the people are crazy. It's that this guy is trying to find his son in the, in the midst of this chaos. Um, kind of like... I, I haven't seen the movie Maggie, but I imagine that's pretty similar. You could describe that as a father trying to find a disease for his uh, hopelessly ailed daughter. Finds a cure to the disease for his hopelessly ailed daughter. Or... Uh, father escorts zombified daughter through wasteland. I actually haven't seen the movie, so... But that's the thing, is that you can describe these things. Or how about this one? Um, let's see. 
A space farmer uses magic powers to rescue princess from mechanical moon. I mean, that sounds terrible. Uh, the, the merit of the movie has nothing to do with your synopsis. Nothing to do with your snippet, you know. Uh, the merit of the movie is in the movie itself. The snippet is just can be written in such a way as to highlight the good features or the bad. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that the Seinfeld episode with the Two-Face is you change the lighting and all of a sudden, ah! You know? Um, and then it, the, the opposite can hold true. I mean, I watched a movie on Netflix a while ago where it was a uh, a man uh, struggling, living alone on his struggling farm is hunted and stalked by vicious creatures. Okay, that just sounds like a plain old scary movie it could be good, it could be bad. It really depends on how it's directed and how they edit it and what they're going for. Now, it turned out it was awful. Because I'm thinking this guy, and I thought it would probably be pretty good because I'm thinking here's this guy sitting on his farm all alone. He doesn't want to leave because he's trying to make it work. Uh, and that it's, um, he's all alone hunt, being hunted by these vicious creatures. So you could play with that a little bit, make that kind of cool. In the end, it wound up being, you know, really awful. It was genetically engineered cows that uh, came to get him, which even that could have been cool, you know, if you had not really known what it was. It was the method that they used to, I won't even get into it. The point is, you could probably come up with some funny ideas for, you know, like a space farmer with space, with superpowers magical powers, rescuing princes from mechanical moon. So what are the types of, if that ever happened to you, you had somebody describe something to you and you said, wow, that sounds like it's going to be awesome. Or that's going to, sounds like it's going to be awful. But it was all the way that they described it that made it so awesome or so awful. Uh, and then, you know, if you ever had that situation where you're, you're looking at something and you, you look at the synopsis and you think, oh, I think I know exactly what that's going to be like. And I think I'm going to love it. But then when you actually watch it, it's the opposite. Or maybe you think you're going to hate it. But you actually watch it and it turns out to be good. Give me some examples of that. I'd love to hear them. I'm also going to link to a, um, a description of a, of, or a vlog that describes this movie in a little bit more, uh, more depth. Um, there's a few aspects of it that he goes into that basically just if you like the slow horror genre uh, there's there's a good reason why you should watch this movie um, a lot of the critiques of this movie are just from people who don't appreciate slow horror so in any event I hope you check it out let me know what you think of the movie let me know about your other synopsis of movies that may have messed you up and uh, in any event have a nice day